Hi everybody. Um, I Some of you guys know that I collect things about Algeria. I wanted to show you guys a book from 1886. I bought this book a really long time ago. The book is called Winters in Algeria by F.A. Bridgman. And F.A. Bridgman was a writer and historian who actually spent time in Algeria. This book is very, very old. The exact publishing date is actually 1890. I had said that it was 1886, um, but it's actually 1890. I'm going to show you some of the pictures in the book. And I'm going to read from the book for a little bit to you because there's a lot of stories in here about Algeria. Um, they have um, basically what this guy did is he went different places and um, in different parts of Algeria. He went to Tlemcen, he went to different cities in Algeria, and he wrote stories about it and actually took pictures. And sometimes I actually um, have recorded the pictures, but other times I haven't. So um, I'm going to read some excerpts of this book. This book is, again, more than, I want to say, how many years old is this? Is it, if it's 1890... 1900 was 100. It's like 150 years old, so this is kind of an old book. Okay, so this book is, and I'm going to read from a, a section called Boumedin, and this is about Tlemcen. About a mile to the east of Tlemcen stands the village of Boumedin. Boumedin was actually a city. A lot of people don't know that. It is in Tlemcen, but it was actually a town. As a town, it's dead. One cafe in the semi-flourishing condition. The old patron saint, Sidi Boumedin, or Midian, sleeps peacefully in his kuba. So he's talking about Sidi Boumedin from 1890. Ever cared for and continually visited. The keeper is un unceasingly running in and out with a bunch of keys to open the door for the kuba to pilgrims and, and visitors for all of whom each receives a gratuity. The kuba is covered with sl silk draperies, overhung with flags and ostrich edge inscriptions under glass. The open court, which gives access to the tune, is about 15 steps leading down to another court. Four beautiful onyx collar columns and the old marble wall, and very interesting. Two buckets at the end of a long chain let sit their sp uh, sacred water um, for the last 600 years that the marble is worn in grooves. So Boumedin, city Boumedin in Tlemcen is over 600 years, this Cuba. Small tiles, green, brown, and white, and intricate ornaments in relief once covered the floor, but souvenir seekers have dug up and pocketed so many that the keepers, excuse me, the keepers now made res responsible to the French government. So the French government actually stepped in in 1890. They're a bunch of jerks. While making studies in the delightfully quality routine, I had a rare opportunity to observe the women who came to burn incense at the door of the Cuba. So I'm going to show you one of the pictures from this book. You see how they have the the um, the cemetery of Sidi Abdurrahman is in there, actually. They put it in the middle. I don't know why they put that in Sidi Boumedin, because you guys from Algeria know that that's not the same. Boumedin in his aid and blessings. So they went to go talk to Sidi Boumedin. And some of you guys know that song, Sidi Boumedin from uh, Shibhalid. And they came down the steps, still veiled, only seeking a roomie, making a study. And they go on a, they let go the hike, which they hold so tightly, a hack, and that's that um, cur um, veil around their face. So those of you that are Algerian probably know this. People that are not Algerian watching this, Algerian women, and some even now, would wear a veil over their face. And it's called, a, I don't know how to pronounce it. I want to say it's a hike or hack or I don't know if I said that right. So uh, just to let you guys know, the main focus of my channel, I'm going to try to plug this in. <laughs> the main focus of my channel when I started doing this, just to let you know, was Algeria. <laughs> and it kind of got off track and I started doing other things like I put music and stuff because it was my main channel. Those of you watching my channel um, maybe don't know this. But I actually don't get anything from this channel. I don't get any, like, if I get 100,000 views, I don't get anything because this channel has so many things on it that are copyrighted that I can't. So I wanted to share this book with you. It's called Winters in Algeria. I think if you go on eBay, it's probably about $150. They're very expensive. I know when I bought it, 
it was, and I'm sorry I'm wheezing. I have really, really bad asthma. And some of you know, some of you guys know and some of you don't that I'm quite sick. I have um, heart problems and asthma and sometimes my breathing is just a hot mess. So I'm having a little problem breathing right now. Well, I had all the intentions of reading this book and then I started having problems breathing. So give me a second. I have very severe heart problems and breathing problems. So sometimes I do well and sometimes I don't. So back to what I was talking about with Algeria. So a lot of people don't really even know the history of like Sidi Boumedin and stuff like that. Some of them do. I mean, I guess if you've been to Tlemcen, a lot of those people know. But Sidi Boumedin was one of the most interesting places for me because it's very old. And it's been kept in its same place. You know, it's been kept very well. In Algeria, unlike some places that really got messed up, City Boumedin did not. Sorry. I am having a lot of problems breathing tonight, and my friends from Algeria got me Ventoline. It's about $2.50 in Algeria. In America, it's about $400. So, um, about the history of this channel. Hold on for a second. <coughs> so, I came out originally. Hi, thank you. I'm sorry. I have I have asthma. Je suis asthmatique. I have some problems with that. So back to the book that I was telling you. So back in the early 2000s, I want to say about 2006, 2007. If you look at some of the videos on my channel, you'll see a lot of different videos I made about Algeria. I was buying Algerian artifacts like this book. And as you can see, here's the cemetery of, of Sidi Abdelrahman. In Algeria. This chapter is actually called Boumedin. And it, it basically talks about the mosque, the tomb of the Sidi. It talks about the dress of the Tlemcen women, also remembers the women of Morocco. And then it talks about how Tlemcen is only 45 miles difference. It talks about in the book, it talks about Sidi Boumedin, and it actually shows a picture of the mosque. Look. This book is 1890, and it, I just because a lot of the books I bought, I bought, um, I bought them, I bought them trying to learn about like different kinds of things, um, and some of them have beautiful pictures. Like this picture is preparing for a wedding. I don't know if you guys can see this. Whoops. And it has a lot of information in it. So. I'm going to read another section. And some of you guys listen when you know, realize that I can pronounce some Algerian words. It's just because I listen to a lot of Arabic. So it's not that unusual for me. This one says, The legend of Ain al Khuts. Often the plain likes a village that takes his name from the spring of legendary interest, Ain al Khuts. Okay? Ain al Khuts is a small pond filled with fish, but at the present day, it doesn't seem to have been a romantic lake in its days of yore. A Channing Langen has survived several centuries, and this is about Algeria. Jafar, a prince of noble blood, the son of a king of Tlemcen, was one day hotly pursuing a gazelle when all of a sudden he saw Aisha, the beautiful daughter of the sheikh of the village bathing in a retired nook under olive trees and weeping willows and oleanders laden with pink and white flowers. Aisha was startled by the gazelle and in her fright in seeing the prince who now gave chase to her instead and said she fled and she came to the spring into which she plunged to escape his grasp. And immediately the chase maiden was changed into a fish. So this is an old Algerian story, by the way. And with brilliant hues and gold and silver sheen, a dead village almost hid under cacti and scorching sun, Ain al Chutz is a center of attraction, one cafe and an old oak tree. The one outstretched, uh, outstretched branches and dense foliage allowed the sun, the sun to struggle through in flickering spots. And it's talking about Ain al Chutz. So there's all these different, um, you know, obviously older Algerian places. Um, they are like, um, 
like there there's even um, a section on Cabilia, but I'm gonna save that for another video. Anyway, nice to talk to all of you, and I'm going to try to talk a little bit about Cabilia and some other things about Algeria. Thank you for coming to my channel. Please explore it. Please look at different things on it. There are a lot of videos. There's videos all over my channel about all different kinds of things. Um, it's a good channel. I mean, I do put rock music on it sometimes, and I put some other things. I talk about Algerians, and I talk about my friends, and I upload different kinds of movies, but the main focus of this channel is actually Algeria. I just, it, because it's my channel, and <laughs> I don't, I don't like, I'm not paid to do this. I just do it for fun. Um, you'll see, oh, do I like Algeria? You're asking me, yes, very, very, very much. It's one of my favorite places in the world. I've been there 11 times, and I probably am gonna do another live talking about how many times I've been to Algeria. Cause that, cause there are some things on this channel, like a television show that I was on, on Jazeera News. Sometimes I put music on. Sometimes I talk about experiences with different people that I knew, but I'm gonna go ahead and I will stop this live and I'm going to actually talk a little bit about my experiences with Algeria. Take care everybody. Thank you for being here with me.